Well, there was this one study in which heart disease mortality dropped over 70%. Cancer death rates were cut in half, too. What did they do? They took these 600 heart patients and put half of them on a Mediterranean diet and put the other half on a so-called uh, American Heart Association strict prudent step two diet in what was to become known as the famous Lyon Diet Heart Trial. After just two years, the survival benefit was so extreme in the Mediterranean group that they had to stop the study prematurely. An ethics committee came in and said it was just too unethical to keep feeding people the American Heart Association diet because there were so many more deaths in that group. One of the most significant differences between the Mediterranean group and the control group was what's called an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. The omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of the control group was 20, and the Mediterranean group, it was 4. All right, All right. well, what's an omega-6, what's an omega-3, and why does the ratio make any difference? Well, fats and oils are made up of constituents called fatty acids. And you know there are three types of fatty acids. There are the so-called saturated fats. And you know the saturated fats are what's found. Um, these are fats are solid at room temperature. So these are like lard, tallow, the animal butter fat, these are the animal fats, and also some of the tropical oils like coconut oil and palm kernel oil. And these are bad for you. Bad. And the second type of set the second type of fatty acid are the so-called monounsaturated fats. And you know, monounsaturated fats are what's found in nuts, avocados, olive oil, and canola oil. And these are uh, uh, liquid at room temperature, kind of semi-solid in the fridge. You know how your olive oil gets a little semi-solid in the fridge? And then the third type are the so-called polyunsaturated fatty acids. These are liquid at both room temperature and in the fridge. And you know there are two types of polyunsaturated fatty acids, the so-called omega-3s and the omega-6s. Omega-3s are found in dark leafy greens, walnuts, hemp seeds, flax seeds, and flaxseed oil. Omega-6s, on, on the other hand, are found predominantly in cottonseed oil, corn oil, safflower oil, and sunflower oil. Now, to understand why this ratio makes any difference, we must take a quick diversion into the making of a heart attack. We all start out with wonderfully healthy coronary arteries when we're born. And the reason why coronary arteries are so important is because they supply the very blood supply to our heart muscle to allow it to pump. But then, for some reason, the inner lining of our arteries gets injured, and that injury can lead to inflammation. And that inflamed area of the arteries can lead to the buildup of oxidized cholesterol. And so inflammation is called the so-called fatty streak stage of atherosclerosis. And that buildup of oxidized cholesterol is the so-called atherosclerotic plaque stage. And that plaque can burst, forming a clot in your coronary arteries, cutting off the blood supply to a region of your heart. And that can lead to sudden death, a fatal heart rhythm, or just damage your heart and set you up for another heart attack or heart failure or all such of other terrible things. Now, up until now, 
all the attention has been focused on this stage. You know, the buildup of oxidized cholesterol. And you know, that's the stage we rock at. Not only do we have much lower cholesterol levels, but because of all the antioxidants we eat in our fruits and vegetables, we keep what little cholesterol we do have from getting oxidized. Okay? But what about all these other stages? That's where omega-3s come in. There is an enzyme in our body. that converts the omega-3s we eat to a, ma a magical substance called EPA. And some of that EPA goes on to produce magical substance number two called DHA. Monounsaturated fats are good for you. These are great. What's so great about these things? Well, they block the inflammation stage. They even block the clot formation stage. They even block this whole sudden death thing. No wonder they're so great. Omega-6s, on the other hand, use this exact same enzyme to produce a substance called AA. And you know, AA is not so great. But you know, we need both of these in our diet, omega-3s and omega-6s, because these are the so-called essential fatty acids, meaning our bodies can make them, we need to take them into our diets. Now, up until 100 years ago, our bodies, we've been eating about roughly equal amounts of omega-3s and omega-6s. So we've had an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of about 1 to 1, or 1, maybe 2 to 1, about equal amounts of omega-6s and omega-3s in our diet. You know, and our body's smart. It knows all about this great and not-so-great thing, right? So when we eat about equal amounts of omega-3s and omega-6s, this enzyme prefers omega-3s. Right? And so when you eat about equal amounts, this, um, this enzyme kind of makes omega-6s wait in line, and so you make a lot more of this stuff and less of this stuff, and that's great. But then, about a hundred years ago, things started to change. Guys with names like Wesson develop all sorts of new ways to industrially produce cooking oils like cottonseed oil, which are just loaded with omega-6s. Now, when you when you start, and so over the last hundred years, we've been, our omega-6 to omega-3 ratio has been rising. We've been eating more and more foods containing things like cottonseed oil and corn oil. And so we've been really flooding our system with omega-6s. And although this enzyme does like omega-3s better, when you just swamp your body with omega-6s, this poor enzyme is overwhelmed, makes the omega-3s wait in line, and you make a lot more of this stuff and less of this stuff, and that's yeah, not so great. 